So we cried out all the more. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. They wanted him to shut up. He's like, uh-uh, I'm not missing out on my miracle. So he cried out all the more and got Jesus' attention. If he would have obeyed those people telling him to be quiet, he would have never got what he was after. Then they called the blind man, saying, Be of good cheer. Rise, he calls you. These same people who were telling him to shut up. Be quiet. You're disturbing the peace. Now all of a sudden are acting like they're on Bartimaeus' side. Oh, be of good cheer. The master's calling you. Religious people, I tell you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Now that is very powerful and that is a true act of faith. Because that garment that he had on represented that he was a blind beggar. He took it off, making a statement. I'm not going to need this anymore. I'm not going to be a blind beggar anymore. I'm going to receive my sight. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni. That means master. That I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. He got what he was missing. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Blind Bartimaeus. Received something that he was missing. Religious people were trying to shut him up. He told him no. And he received his sight. Mark chapter 5 verse 25 through 34. Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had was no better. Anybody who tries to tell you that doctors are the gift of healing for today. Right here, we see that there were doctors. They tried to treat the woman. She grew worse. The Bible says she spent all that she had. She was in the worst position that she could have possibly been in at that moment. Doctors couldn't make her better. And anybody that tries to say... Doctors are the gift of healing for today. Show me one person in the scriptures where Jesus said, I can't help you. Go to Luke. Who was one of the 72. Not part of the 12, but one of the 72. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd. Touched his garment, for she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of blood was dried up in her. She felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Jesus, immediately knowing that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? Notice something here. The Bible is showing us many people were touching at Jesus. Many were tugging at his clothes. But only one Jesus took notice of. Because only one had faith. And that faith drew power out of him. Jesus had nothing to do with the miracle. But the woman's faith had to do with the miracle. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. Well, if Jesus were here today, I could go to him. No, just go in faith to his presence. You don't have to have him physically there. And that faith 
will draw out the power because the, Jesus didn't notice this woman. He had nothing to do with the miracle. The woman's faith did it, and the woman's faith got what she was after. And, and by the way, in another parallel version of this, Jesus said, No, I felt virtue, power, anointing go out of me. Someone touched me. And he looked around to see who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and troubling, knowing what had happened to her, came, fell down before him, told him the whole truth. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Three, we don't understand this woman's situation. We don't know what she was missing. The scripture don't tell us that. But we do know in these three accounts, your faith has made you whole. All of this accompanies salvation. And maybe you find yourself in a backslidden condition. You've walked away from your faith. You once were serving God. Now you are serving the devil. Well, I don't dance around naked around no pentagram. No, but if you're in sin, you are a Satan worshiper. If you're living in something that the Bible deliberately calls sin, you might not be dancing around naked around a pentagram, sacrificing virgin, virgins and babies. But as long as you're in sin, you're serving the devil. Why? Because you're in direct rebellion to Jesus. Therefore, the Bible says, Satan's your father. Well, I don't like hearing that. You might not like hearing it, but the Bible makes it clear. Well, I don't agree with that. Then you don't agree with the Bible. It is clear. There are only two fathers found in the Bible. Jesus told them, you are of your father, the devil. And when the devil lies, he is coming straight from his own resources. Either God's your father or Jesus is your father. And if you're in sin, the devil's your father. And if you're in a backslidden condition, the good news is, the Bible says, Jesus is married to the backslider. And he has me here to draw you back home. Or if you never heard about Jesus Christ a day in your life, I'm here to introduce you to the best friend you have. You're about ready to go switch fathers. Because the Bible says, God's willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And the truth is, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And we can never be good enough to earn our way to heaven. The Bible makes that clear by saying that our righteousness is as filthy rags. But the good news is, is as that one verse in my note says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whether you're in a backslidden condition. You can't lose your salvation, but you can surely walk away from it. And how do you walk away from it? Go back and live as if you never prayed that prayer. Go right back to the very sins. But God loves you so much that all you have to do is come to him. All you have to do is confess. All you have to do is repent. What does repent mean? It means that you were walking in one, one direction, but you had a change of heart. Now you're walking in the other. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he gave up his heavenly home. Come down to live as a man. The Bible says he gave up all his heavenly glory. Everything Jesus did from, 30, from age 30 to 33, because Jesus did not do one miracle till the Holy Spirit came up on him, showing us an example of how we should live and live in the power of the Holy Ghost. 
but also he he gave up his life. He says, "No one takes my life away from me. I lay it down." He proved it at Gethsemane. He waited for him to be arrested. He he had false witnesses try to come against him. They couldn't agree. They handed him over to Pilate. He bore the worst beating ever. The Bible says that that his own mother couldn't recognize him. They beat him to the point that, that you could see his bowels from the exterior. Jews didn't do it. Romans did it. And they brought him to a place of death without actually being it, without actually killing him. Then they led him up the hill of Golgotha, drove nine inch nails in his wrists and ankle bones. In the heat of the day, his eyes became like sandpaper. When they beat him, they ripped his beard straight from his face. The only way he could breathe out was to lift up on those nails and have his back go against the splintery cross or or maybe even a tree because they didn't always use crosses, they used a tree. And that was the cross. Then he cried something out. And what he cried out made it clear. He officially made an open show of the devil. It was this. I, I can't remember it in the Greek. But, but that word there means paid in full. Because people would, after their debt was paid off, they would write that word. But it also was something soldiers would cry out. Meaning that the battle is won. So what Jesus was crying out is, their debts paid in full. The battle is won. Then he cried out with a loud voice, gave up his ghost. At that moment, an earthquake happened. The veil was ripped in two, making a clear way to the Holy of Holies, to God the Father. The tombs opened up. Dead saints walked out, but they stayed in the grave until Jesus rose on the third day after Jesus went to Abraham's bosom, preached to the captives, sent them off to heaven. Then, when he rose from the dead, they were able to come out of the grave. Je Jesus appeared to Mary Madeline, then to some other disciples, then eventually to the twelve. But before he went to the twelve, because we know Jesus told Mary Madeline, don't touch me, I have not been glorified yet. So somewhere between there, he went to heaven, got glorified, came back down, and told, told Doubting Thomas, put your hands here in my side, into my hands, and don't be believing, but be believing. After, after hanging out with his disciples for 40 days and 40 nights, he ascended to heaven, and then on day day 50, on the day of Pentecost, he sent the Holy Spirit down to us to be our comforter, to be our guide, to be our teacher, to be our leader into all truths. He told them, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the dunamis power from on high. That is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then when we look in Scripture, every time the Holy Spirit came, every time somebody received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says they spoke in tongues and prophesied. The Apostle Paul said, Though I speak in tongues of men and of angels, all of this is to empower us as believers. To where, when we get saved... We will be, not just going to heaven, but we will be delivered. We will be protected. We will be healed. We will be preserved. And we will be made whole. And that from us, rivers of living water will go out to where we don't keep it to ourselves. But we share this life, this law of life with the whole world. So if this is for you. If you want to either come back home or if you want to make a first time decision to serve Jesus, just pray this prayer out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. 
Forgive me of my sins. For I know that you died on the cross for me. That you rose on the third day. Justify me. So fill me with your power. Let your spirit, Jesus, come and breathe life into me. For I declare that now God is my father. Jesus is my elder brother. And the Holy Spirit, he is my teacher, my guide, leader into all truths. And he is my comforter. And the devil, as of today, is no relation at all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father God, for anyone that prayed that prayer with me right now, I release over them the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. Be filled in Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, there are two things you need to do. You need to get connected to a good Bible-believing, Spirit-filled, tongue-talking church. Because we don't want you to just start the race. We want you to finish the race. If you don't have one in your area, which with the second thing I want you to do is get a hold of me. Let me know if it's a first time decision or a rededication. I want to actually help you find a good Bible believing spirit filled church. But like I said, if you don't have one in your area, you can get connected to my church, his tabernacle family church. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us. On his tabernacle family church. Church's page. As well as our web page. On top of that. We have. You can also watch our Ithaca. And Mansfield campuses. Also on Facebook. But if you're in these areas. Get connected. This is the, the one of the best churches. That we have. So I want you to get connected. You also need to get in the Word every single day. The Bible makes it clear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. On top of that, what the Word is, is spiritual food for your spirit man. You cannot live spiritually without getting in the Word. You will die of malnutrition. Just like in the physical, if you don't eat, you die. If you don't feed your spirit the word of God every day, you'll die. It's just impossible. So get in the word. Pray every day and get connected to a good Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. Now, for those of you who are believers, who are watching this broadcast, I want to give you an opportunity that help me get Spirit Blaze Ministry started. Right now, I am working on getting the radio portion up and going. The plan is, is to get it up online and let God grow it to where we get a satellite radio launch. All different genres of Bible-believing, Spirit-filled music. We want music that makes not just for good religion. But good Bible. It has to be good Bible. It has to be anointed and we will be playing it. Whether it's Christian rap, pop, hip-hop, country, meaning, meaning soulful gospel, spirit-filled gospel, whatever your taste is, we're going to have it up there for you. We also plan on getting a Christian television station started. Want to start online and grow to where it's on all, all cable and satellite. By the way, the satellite thing, the satellite radio I want to launch is going to be completely free for the listeners, but listeners support it. Those who God moves to give, they can give, but we're not doing the subscriptions. We want everybody to hear it, be able to have access to it. That's why we're also going to make sure it's still online. To where people can listen to it online and on an app if they don't have the satellite. On top of that, 
we plan on doing 21 day outdoor crusades, but eventually get a cre creation museum up and going with a life-size Noah's Ark and a planetarium. Built around a 500,000 seat arena where I plan on preaching all day long to where we are taking these 21 day outdoor crusades into a all year round thing. The days that, the three weeks that I take for vacation, I'll be bringing in some of the best men of God that I know. Like the Shuttlesworth family or one of my leaders or maybe even people that my leaders know and like and trust. So... To be able to start this and help us with the radio, I have a GoFundMe account for this radio. I plan on putting it up here for you to where you can give to it. So thanks for watching this broadcast. If you give, thank you and Father God, anyone that you move to give who watches this Facebook or this video, this YouTube video, may they be blessed a hundredfold. And receive a hundredfold return. In Jesus' mighty name. Thanks for watching the broadcast. God bless.